Virgin Most Powerful Radio, sharing the gospel with clarity and charity. I'm a soldier for Christ. I'm a soldier for Christ. I'm a soldier. No, they'll never take us under because we're bringing truth like thunder. Raining on your speakers like a ton of bricks. Hold the cross high because we're Catholics. Fight the good fight with the truth. Stand tall with the truth. I'm a warrior for Christ. I'm in love with the truth. Love God. Save souls. Slay error. Go stronger. Blue Collar Catholic Radio, two Catholics with a PhD in common sense. We are not right versus left. No, no, no. We are right versus wrong. Amen, brother. My name is Jesse Romero, the Latin lover of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Latin lover of Our Lady. And my name is Terry Barber, the Lebanese lover of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the Lebanese lover of Our Lady. And I'm all fired up today because you know what, Jess? The Word of God fires me up. And that's what I'm so happy about. And every day here at Virgin Most Powerful, on the Terry and Jesse show, we open up the Bible for the readings. Normally, we do the gospel. But Jess, I told you, I almost called you late last night, man. I said, wow, that first reading from Romans, it's so appropriate for what's going on in our culture and on our church today. So I want to ask you, Jess, can we read the first reading of the Mass rather than the gospel? Absolutely. And I will tell you, uh, truth be told, it's Romans chapter 1, verses 16 to 25. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is in the lectionary, but unfortunately, yeah. from verses 26 uh, to 20... They're hard-hitting. ...to 32, that's been taken out of the lectionary. And there's a reason. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, so you won't hear the second half. We will. You'll hear it today. Yeah, th- this first half, it's talking about the sin of homosexuality, and the modernists that put the lectionary together they made sure that they did not, did not include from verses 28 to 32 because those verses clearly oh, yeah. denounce homosexuality we'll and lesbianism. Yep. Clearly. And so in uh, the Church of Nice, they didn't want to say that, so they took it out. Here's what today's Mass readings: the Word of God, the first reading. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God For the salvation of everyone who believes, for Jew first and then Greek, for in it is revealed the righteousness of God from faith to faith. As it is written, the just, uh, the one who is righteous by faith will live. By the way, according to tradition, Martin Luther says this is the verse that struck him like thunder in the heart. And he knew that he had to leave the Roman Catholic Church. (laughs) He claims it was Romans 1.16 for those of you historically minded people says, the wrath of God is indeed being revealed from heaven against every impiety and wickedness of those who suppress the truth by their wickedness. For what can be, for what can be known about God is evident to them. That's called natural law. Mm-hmm. Because God made it evident to them ever since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes of eternal power and divinity have been able to be understood and perceived in what he has made. As Vatican I says, we can know God uh, basically just by reason. St. Thomas. By, by, by reason, we, yep. Vatican I is very clear. We can know God by reason. Yep. Okay? And that's what St. Paul's arguing here. As a result, they have no excuse. You have no excuse for what? If you don't know God just by reason alone, you have no excuse because of all the evidence he's left out there for his creation. He says, for although they knew God, they did not accord him glory as God or give him thanks. Instead, they became vain in their reasoning and their senseless minds were darkened. This reminds me of all the Amazonian proponents, Father James Martin, all the modernists in the church. This describes them. Look at what these are. It says, although they knew God, the modernists in the Catholic church with mitres and roaming collars and and theologians, Mm -hmm. although they knew God, they did not court, uh, court him glory as God or give him thanks. Instead, they became vain. That means it's all about me. It's, it's, uh, it's my moral conscience. That's what it means. My, not the church's moral, collective moral conscience. My moral conscience. That's vain reasoning. That's what modernists use. It says, and their senseless minds were darkened. That's what happens when you embrace heresy and you're stubborn and obstinate 
all of a sudden God says, all right, you want to be stupid? I'll let you be stupid. And your, and your mind becomes darkened. While claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for the likeness of an image of mortal man or of birds or the four-legged animals or of snakes. That's what happened at the Vatican Garden with the Amazon Synod, day one of the of of, uh, of the Synod. Yep. Uh, this, it's the, the deification, the honoring, the worshiping of, of creatures, yeah. animals, and uh, you put God aside. You exchange the glory of God for the Amazon Synod. Let's start worshiping creatures and animals. Therefore, God handed them over to impurity through the lust of their hearts for the mutual degradation of their bodies. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and revered and worshiped the creature rather than the creator who was blessed forever. Amen. So what happens here? The next verses that uh, the modernists took out of the lectionary. Read it. From verse, yeah, from verse says, uh, 26, it says, for this, here's what's not in the lectionary. Yep. you got to go to the Holy Bible to read this because the modernists have taken this out. They did this decades ago, by the yep. way. Yep. It says, for this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. Who? The modernists. Their women exchanged natural relations for unnatural. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passions for one another. Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in their own persons the due penalty for their error. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a base, that means a reprobate or a wicked, to a base mind and to improper conduct. They were all filled with with all manner of wickedness, evil, covetousness, malice, full of envy, murder, strive, deceit, mal malignity. Yep. They are gossip, slanders, haters of God. It, all, it says, though they know God's decree that those who do such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but approve those who practice them. What are they talking about there? Verse 26 to 27. Homosexuality and lesbianism, this is the, the results of embracing heresy, obstinate stubbornness, hardness of heart. They start worship, They stop worshiping God. They start worshiping each other's naked bodies. And it says in the very last verse, verse, verse 32, though they know God's decrees, yeah, they know God's laws, and those who do such things deserve to die, they not only, they not only do them, but approve those who practice them. What's it talking about? Homosexuality and lesbianism. They approve of that themselves, and they approve of those who practice them. Jesse, I just want to add one more thought. It's from the Ignatius uh, Study Bible that Dr. Scott Hahn put in together for, and he comments on that verse that homosexual act activity is expressly condemned in the Old Testament also. It's going to give you the Old Testament references, Leviticus chapter 18, as well in the New Testament in other parts of the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 9, 1 Timothy 10, it is also a grave disorder that victimizes not just a, a man, but both men and women and turns them away from each other and their natural complementary. For Paul, sexual rebellion against nature is a fallout of spiritual rebellion against God. You know what? If I had Father Martin with me right now, Jesse, I'd say, Father, let's have a Bible study. Let's ask and let's let's see what you think about these scripture verses. I have a feeling I know what he would say. I don't want to talk to you right now. I'm going to give you yeah. the silent treatment. No, the modernists, they already have come up with their give own plans. Go the ahead. Is the Pope needs to correct them. Yeah, well, that's what he said. The catechism needs to change. Well, yeah, you know no, what I he, say? And then he would also say, the modernists would say, yeah, all those, uh, 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 they'll laugh. They'll say, all those verses uh, that you're going to quote to me in Leviticus, yeah. and, and, and Je he says, that applies to the Jews. That was the cultural <laughs> thing. That was the cultural Jewish baggage. And not only that. They'll say, they've already got their prepared arguments, Terry. Yeah. That's why you need the Pope to come down with, like, thunder on them and say, you got it. you're wrong. This is the proper exegesis. They'll say, oh, yeah. Well, Terry, it also says that eating shellfish and crabfish I've heard and eating four-legged creatures, that's also wrong in Leviticus. Yeah. So where do you draw the line? So they've already got their arguments. Trust me, Terry. That's <laughs> why you need the Pope to come down like thunder. And I says, agree. Thus saith the Lord. This is wrong, period. This is the correct exegesis. I agree. Jesse, Bishop Sheen's comment today fits right in with us, but let's get to St. Teresa of Avila's feast day. Well, tell us a little bit about her. St. Teresa of Avila, pray for us. Terry, she's a doctor of the church. A, tough woman. a virgin, a doctor of the church. Uh, she was born in Avila, Spain. Yep. She was uh, known for her 
her beautiful, outgoing, enthusiastic, and courageous personality. Yep. Uh, at the age of 20, she ended up entered the Carmelite convent in Avila. She became seriously ill, but she persevered. She had a lot of deep mystical experiences about God, and uh, she was known to engage in deep meditation. And actually, she would fall into what's called like a trance, like a mystical, uh, the, yeah, the word is called, uh, I'm escaping my mind, but it would be like a, a, a she would be caught up in, 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 and Excellent. swooned in, by God in this mystical experience during prayer. Mm-hmm. She ended up writing a book really about this uh, called Interior Castle, yeah, where class. she describes the different stages of spiritual growth. Again, she's uh, one of the few female doctors of the Catholic Church, uh, and uh, she was canonized in, uh, in nine, in, excuse me, four years after her death in 1582. Yeah. She was also part of the Skulls yeah. Carmelites, sure. and uh, she was also known to go to the cemeteries at night with the crucifix wow. and pray uh, deliverance prayers against evil spirits. And she was a doctor of the church in 1970. St. Hey, Teresa of Avila, pray, pray for, for us. us. And we come back, I've got a quote from Fulton Sheen that fits right in to what we're going to be talking about when we come back here on the Terry and Jesse show. And again, I want to let you know, Father Joe Fessio will be, will be with us tomorrow talking about Cardinal Seurat's book, The Day Is Now Far Spent. You won't want to miss that tomorrow here on the Terry and Jesse show. You won't hear Bishop Sheen until we come back from the quick break, but man, what he has to say about the church and about the orthodoxy, you'll say this man must have been alive today, but he said it 50 years ago, but it's very appropriate. You won't want to miss it. We're going to inspire you with some good news, too, about a baseball player. What? How can I inspire you? Well, when I tell you, when you come back, you're going to go, i got to tell my kids that story. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse Show. We're too blessed to be stressed. We'll be right back. Welcome, Daniel. You're on the line. What's on your mind, brother? Hi, I just wanted to share a testimony about Virgin Most Powerful Radio. I had a buddy at work who, you know, he's a lukewarm Catholic guy, and I wanted him to start listening to the Terry and Jesse show, so I kept telling him to download the app, and he kept putting me off. So one day, I grabbed his phone, and I downloaded the app <laughs> for him. I went on vacation, and you know, I kept telling him to listen to it. He was kind of put me off. I came back from vacation. He comes to my cubicle and he says to me, hey, man, I've been listening to Terry and Jesse's show and it's great. And it's uh, made a big impact in his life. The guy, he's going to weekly adoration a couple times a wow. week. He goes to the mass in the morning. Mm-hmm. And, uh, he's an uh, on-fire Catholic and he promotes uh, the Terry and Jesse show on the Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Wow. Daniel, what a testimony. And I want to encourage our listeners to get those cards by going to virginmostpowerfulradio.org and uh, do what Daniel's doing. Go out and spread the faith by inviting people to listen to Virgin Most Powerful. Daniel, thanks for your testimony, brother. God love you. You're welcome. Jesus said in Luke 17, When you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, We are unprofitable servants. We have only done our duty. According to St. John of the Cross, God is pleased with the little deeds we do in secret. He takes more pleasure in these than in a multitude of grand works that we may do out of the desire to be seen by others. May God help us to do the things that please Him, and not just to appear great in the eyes of others. Good morning. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow! That's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. 
Can you believe this? <laughs> There's a woman at AOC's uh-huh. town hall, uh, yeah, town hall meeting, yep. and she declares, a young lady, yeah. she said, we should eat babies to stop climate change. Sick. And I'll tell you what's crazier yeah. is the way Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, she nodded right her head look, yeah. in agreement. Oh, my lady. You'll be amazed. The nutty lady, she said, we only have a few months left. I love that you, AOC, you support the Green Deal. But getting rid of fossil fuels is not going to solve the problem fast enough. So the crazy lady went on to say, I think your next campaign, your next campaign slogan has to be this. We got to start eating babies. Sick. In fact, she, you can look on the Internet. She has a T-shirt. It says, save the planet. Eat the children. And uh, this AOC supporter, she says, we need to eat babies to solve the climate change. Now, the problem with all this is this. If I was a congressman or a congresswoman, I would have said, shut the mic. Get that crazy women out of my town hall. Of course. That's disgusting what she said. I disavow everything she said. This makes me sick to my stomach. Where the heck did this lady come from? Get her out of here right now. But Terry, instead, no, no, she, she just kind of looked I saw that. That's and just started nodding her head yeah, uh-huh, up and uh-huh. down. Like, yeah, like, okay. Ah, okay, That's you your, got mm-hmm. Hey, I'm listening. I'm listening. And uh, I, 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 Terry, all I could say is this. Uh, I don't know what asylum this lady escaped from yeah. or if she's some type of a zombie, but uh, this congresswoman, AOC, should have denounced her in the highest terms, and she didn't. I'm done. And, you know, Jesse, they're going to have a debate. The Democratic Party's having a debate. You know, we're not right versus left. We're right versus wrong. This is just plain wrong. But every person in the Democratic Party that's running is for abortion on demand. And I just want to remind people, when you vote, like, like, like Father Frank Pavone and others have said, even Father Mark said, if you're voting for a pro-abortion candidate, that's a mortal sin if you know that abortion is murder. And you now know it. If you didn't know it, you'll know it now. So you have to vote appropriately. Jesse, Sir, give us some good news. Then we'll oh, man, am I? Well, let me give Fulton give Sheen, and then, and then I'll give you the good news. Fulton Sheen ahead. Let's bring that uh, choo-choo train in. All right. Yesterday, we had uh, Henry Newman with Bishop Sheen. Today, he's alone. He says a very profound statement that applies again to the church today. He says, almost everyone today wants religion. But everybody wants a religion that does not cost too much. That is why Christianity has been watered down to suit the modern mind. You know what, Jesse? At the the Amazon Senate, I believe that's what they're doing. They're watering it down. They're lowering the bar to make it so that, oh, well, we don't have enough priests. We don't want to say uh, that we need to uh, pray and make sacrifices for vocations. No, let's just ordain, you know, um, married men. And, you know, why not get the diaconate for women and priesthood? That's where they're going. And here's my point. Bishop Sheen nailed it. They're just wanting to compromise. That's what they're doing, and we need to pray that they don't do that. That's why we made holy hours of reparation for this event. All right, now the good news. And I'm excited about some good news. Everybody knows that the World Series is coming. You know, the Nationals, the Washington Nationals are probably going to be playing the Yankees, okay? But the the pitcher, one of their uh, pitchers, his name is Daniel Hudson, was uh, the made a made a choice not to come to play in game 1 of the National League Champion Series because his wife was giving birth to their daughter in Arizona, Jesse, not far from you. Mm. And a lot of the fans got upset and they said, "Hey, Come on, have your priorities right. Baseball is number one. And he comes back and says, no, my family is my top priority. He says, you know, life is sacred, and uh, I'm going to be there with my wife because that's where I'm supposed to be. Now, the national manager, Dave Martinez, he supported the decision. You know what, everybody? Here's my take. God bless uh, David Hudson, the pitcher who made that right decision. And I want you to say a prayer for him and his team that they'll beat the Yankees in the World Series because I, I love people who do the right thing. And, you know, I probably won't even watch any of the games. But if I do, you know what team I'm voting for? The Nationals because they got their priorities set. And their manager said this. Said. Now, here's my point, Jess. The fans, you got people saying, hey, don't you, you're all screwed up. Don't you know that baseball is number one? No. That's the problem in the world. Remember we talked about that, about 
worshiping idols, well, baseball can become an idol, just like money can too. And I really appreciate a pitcher who says, my top priority is my family. And uh, it's just nice to see someone knowing, you know, to do the right thing. It's high profile. So that's my good news story, Jess. Let's move on to some sad st- um, Well, it's sad in this sense, but we have to tell people the truth with charity and then show the answer to the problems that are ha- facing us today. But that's a good news story yeah, that I shared. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Terry. Yep. That's, that, that is the good story. Uh, and I, I, like, I like to see a lot of these uh, athletes, Pro- high-profile athletes, yeah. come out and uh, really just uh, show, Stand show, up, man. show virtue. Show virtue. Be it. a man. Yep. But uh, have you heard, and are you appalled now that we know, oh, yeah. that the transgender puberty-blocking drugs oh, have been linked to thousands of deaths, according to the FBA? They yep. don't want to get that out, though. No, no, no. More than 6,300 adults have died from reactions to a drug that is used as a puberty blocker in gender-confused children, according to the Food and Drug Administration. They said that, uh, again, between 2012 and June 30th of this year, the FDA documented over 40,764 adverse reactions suffered by patients who took the, uh, the, the medication called Lupron, which is used as a hormone blocker. And uh, drugs used as puberty blockers in in youth are also linked to thousands of adult deaths, according to the FDA. FDA. And these drugs that are being used to halt puberty and gender-confused youth, uh, again, we're seeing that they're detrimental and deadly to young people. It's called Lupron. Yeah, Lupron, right. It's being prescribed off-label for use in children who have been diagnosed with gender dysphoria despite the lack of formal FDA approval for the, that purpose. And the drug is clinically approved for treatment of precocious puberty, a condition where children start their pu- pubertal processes at an abnormally early age, and the blocker is, is administered for a short time until the proper age. Well, Dr. Michael Laidlaw, he's a California-based endocrinologist, endocrinologist yeah. who exposed in April that the doctors are giving testosterone to gender confused girls as young as eight what? years old. Oh, he questioned why a psychological disorder like gender dysphoria would be treated with some of these hard drugs instead of proper psychological care. Gender dysphoria, this do- Dr. Michael Laidlaw said, is not an endocrine condition, right. but is a psychological one. I would say also it's a sin condition, a yep. sin disorder as a result of original sin and actual sin. Uh, but that's a different. But he says this is a psychological and one that should therefore be treated with proper psychological care. But it becomes an endocrine condition once you start using puberty blockers and giving cross-sex hormones to kids. Terry, dangerous stuff here. Well, Jesse, let me just give a God moment in this. And that is when you play with Mother Nature, you play with the way God designed a man and a woman. And you decide you have a better idea and you're going to start giving them uh, you know things that they shouldn't have. Well, there's going to be an effect. Now you can be forgiven for this sinful action. Okay, you can, but God will forgive you. But nature never forgives. And you see, that's the result of this. And they don't want to point out that in 2017, the All amount the of money, money was 669 million dollars in the annual report. For producing this drug. So it's widely being used, even as you said, the FDA, he's not approving it. But here's the point, Jess, where we're, when, when think about, I'm going to tie this into abortion, and that is we're killing our unborn babies. Why not when a kid's eight to 13 years of age and say, well, you know what, let's give them some, some hormone uh, disease uh, uh, stuff and let's let them change his, try and change his sex to the other, to a, a male, to a female. See, here's the point. What are we doing? We're playing God at, at the beginning of life, during life. And I tie this all into... And at the end of life, end euthanasia. Of, you, you know where I was going, Jess. It's all about me. It's all, this is all Frankenstein science. You got it, partner. And, and, and the, a lot of the people in the medical community, they're Dr. Frankenstein. You got they it, are. Jess. Yeah. And, and, but, uh, but we're playing God. You see, this is where it's offensive. Well, that's what, that's what Dr. Frankenstein yeah. wants to do. And, and he wants to is, bring somebody from the dead and, this is, and play God. Yeah, and this is such a serious sin that offends God that we have to stop it. And why do we bring this up? Because we want to share this with you because you're going to be told by some doctor, oh, your kid needs this. And you tell him, no, he doesn't. 
Okay, that's what that's I. Right. That's what I'm trying to convey here. That well, this guy's a whistleblower, Terry. He's got a lot of courage, Doctor Michael oh, Laidlaw. I don't know done. what he's, he's done. Or what he he's going to be persecuted, Jeff. He's a whistleblower, and uh, he's saying that this uh, this government funded research now allows children as young as eight to be put on sex hormones. Uh, he says, "I'm sounding the alarm." Yep. He goes, "This is dangerous. These are these drugs are dangerous for young people." And through the Freedom of Information Act. Dr. Laidlaw and some of his colleagues found that they've even lowered the age for cross-sex hormones from 13 to, to 8 years old. Can you imagine uh, an 8-year-old girl getting testosterone? Yeah. Okay, That's a third or fourth grader. This is unbelievable. Child abuse. But yes. this is what's going on. And these, these gender-confused Ugh. teen girls as young as 13, Dr. Michael Laidlaw, he warned, they're having their breasts removed, Terry, yeah. via mastectomy procedures. And the boys, the age of 17, are, again, they're, play, they're, they're developing uh, their sexual organs mm-hmm. or not developing them just... uh, because of these, these hormone blockers. So these 17-year-old boys are developed at about the age of a 9-year-old boy in terms of their body parts. That's a problem. And so under the nebulous concept of gender identity, Children as young as eight are receiving injections for gender transition treatment. And Dr. Michael Laidlaw, he says, the phrase was defined in a recent court case as a person's core internal sense. Folks, that's what uh, gender transition treatment means. Your core internal sense of their own gender and that it was the primary factor in determining their sex, not biology. Dr. Michael Laidlaw says, this is false. This is false information. Your internal sense doesn't tell you who, what you are. Biology tells you what you are. And the whole thing, Terry, yeah. is an experiment on our children by Satan using once again the medical community who's being used as useful idiots. That's right. And Dr. Michael Laidlaw, he says, we are ignoring the voices of the people who have come out of this lifestyle and recognize their sex. And he says the National Institute for Health is allowing unethical research to be conducted on young people. He says, that's my opinion. Yes, I agree with him. Let me give you an example. This last couple of months, we've been really talking about vaping and how it's hurting our young people. And 100 people died all around the country. And the, they're coming it was a thousand. Say, over, a thousand. Over, okay, a thousand people died. And this is horrible. And they stopped the vaping. They're not selling this product. Well, let's talk about 6,300 adults have died from these reactions, from these drugs. And nothing is being said. Nothing. This is the first time anybody's heard this. Why? Political correctness, brother. Hey, when we come back, wow. Have you thought of it? We're going to talk about a Franciscan who's not politically correct. No, he's talking about the Catholic Church is heading towards an eternal papal schism. What? Hey, tune in. When we come back, we'll share the good news of how we can pray for Holy Mother, the church here at the Terry and Jesse Show on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. We have an exciting story for you to listen to, the story of John Pridmore. John Pridmore was a hitman for the gangs in East London. I met some guys who seemed to have everything that I thought would make you happy. So I started working for these people, so to my shame I was involved in vicious crime of all sorts. He collected debts for the gangs, and if people didn't pay their debts, it was his job to kill them. And as I drove home that night, I thought, what have I become that I could kill someone and not even care? He was in the elevator on his way up to the 17th floor, and there was a 17-year-old young man in the elevator with him. Suddenly, this young man looked John right in the eye, and he said, Jesus loves you. And I said the first prayer I'd ever said. I said, up to now, all I've done is take from you, God. Now I want to give. Within a year, by the grace of God, John was able to get out of the gang and be freed from this road to hell that he had been walking on. Go to Virgin Most Powerful YouTube channel and listen to this story today. This is Terry Barber. I want to invite you to take advantage of having your funeral or your loved one's funeral at the Sacred Heart Chapel in downtown Covina. It's a 115-year-old church. 
beautiful chapel. And all you got to do is call me at 661-972-7872. And I'll personally make the arrangements with your mortuary to have your funeral or your loved one's funeral here at Sacred Heart Chapel. You won't regret it. 661-972-7872. God love you. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow! That's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US1. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Have you heard of Father Thomas Wynandy? Wynandy, yep. He's an incredible Capuchin father, and uh, he's calling on all of us Catholics to pray in fear and trembling that Jesus might deliver us, Terry, from this time of trial. Jesse, before you go into that, mention this, that he actually, uh, Father is, well, he's, I mean, he was the former chief of staff for the U.S. Bishop's Doctrinal Committee in a commentary published today in the Catholic thing. So this is not just some slouch. This guy's a, a first-class theologian. What he's going to say will probably Highly rock- respected. Yeah, highly him. respected. But let's continue. What's he going to rock us with? Yeah, he was, uh, again, the theologian for the U.S. bishops yep. to show you this, the stature of this man. Yeah, He says that the Catholic Church is heading towards an, an in, here's the quote, internal. internal papal schism, close quote. What does he mean by that, Jess? He says, this is whereby Pope Francis effectively yeah. leads to opposing factions. Right. And so Father Thomas Wynandy, he's warned. He says, these are divided into one loyal to the papacy yet critical of this pontificate, that would be myself, Yes, and the other supported of, him, supported of, of him due to his tolerance of ambiguous teaching and pastoral practice. That's Father that would Martin. be the modernist. Yeah, Father Martin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Father Wynandy, the, the former chief of staff for the U.S. bishops, who was, by this way, relieved from his post for, for really uh, asking Pope Francis to clarify some things that he said, and the U.S. bishops just fired him. Oh, he yeah. said, this is the real schism. He says "There's an ever, it's ever-growing in intensity. And he, a, a member of the Vatican's Internal Theological Commission, Father Wynandy, be, began by clarifying that he believes when the Pope refers to contemporary schismatics in the church, he means his American critics. That would be Terry and myself and others. Yep. But he pointed out that the overwhelming majority of those critics would never initiate a schism, and that's nope. true. As they, we all wish to remain faithful Nowhere to the go. Pope, yep. even if it means being respectfully critical yep. of some of the things he's doing. Yep. The Capuchin also believes that the German church would also not go into schism. They're the modernists, yep. despite their bishops wishing to take their faithful down a binding synodal path, contrary to the universal tradition of the church. Terry? You know what, Jesse? Father says that the church finds herself in a situation she never expected. Jess, 10 years ago, would you have expected this, brother? Not me. No. On one hand, it's the majority of the world's faithful loyal to the Pope because he is their pontiff, but critical of his pontificate. And on the other hand, a large contingent of the world's faith who support him because he allows and fosters right, ambiguous teaching. Now, what the church will end up with then is a Pope who is the Pope of the Catholic Church and simultaneously the de facto leader for all practical purposes of a schismatic church. I've never seen anybody say this, Jesse, but it makes sense because he is the head of both. The appearance of one church remains, while in fact there are two. You know, Jesse, I've been saying that for years, that there's two churches. Now, the yeah, only a phrase... A lot more people are saying it now, Terry, yeah, you're right. it's coming out, man. The only phrase that I can find to describe the situation is eternal, internal papal schism. Father Winandi explained, for the Pope, even as Pope, will effectively be the leader of a segment of the church 
that through its doctrine, moral teachings, and ecclesial structure is for all practical purposes schismatic. Father Martin isn't a good example of that, Jesse, on the issue of homosexuality. Continue, Jess. Terry, you know what? It's funny what he's saying here. Yeah, I get it. Think about it. I get it. It's exactly what Jesus told us in the gospel. Oh, yeah. He said that in the church, you have wheat and weeds. He says in the church, right, you have sheep and goats. He says in the church, you have good fish and bad fish. So I think Jesus, in light of Father Winendi, what he's saying I'm going back to the Gospels. I'm saying, Good. wait, right Jesus there. did warn us about this, yep. that within the church, there would be these two competing factions. In other words, Terry, in the church, you have under Adam, so to speak, the second Adam, Jesus, you have Cain and Abel. Right. And this is what Father Wynandy is explaining to us, that the Pope right now, the Cain and Abel part of the Catholic Church, the good and the bad, is very, very obvious right now. But what's sad is that the Pope, he's the Papa of Cain and Abel. Yep. He calls the Abels, he calls us rigid, Terry. He, he pokes fun at, at a young work. priests that wear cassock. Yeah. He, he, he says that Anything they're changed. rigid if they wear s- Saturno hats. Yeah. Father Winendi goes on to say, the Capuchin theologian added that this is the real schism, that's in our midst, and it must be faced. Mm-hmm. As uh, as he is in control, he would, I fear, he's talking about the Pope, Pope Francis, he would welcome it, for he sees the, the schematic element as the new paradigm yeah. for the future church. Based on what in other words, Pope, Pope Francis, yeah. uh, he, he seems to be okay with it based on a statement he made a couple of weeks that's ago. Right. He goes, because I'm not afraid of a schism. Yeah. And that's what Father Wanandi saying, that, he could see Pope Francis saying, hey, I'm the Pope, and I got Cain and Abel here, and you're both going to coexist. You, Abel, you guys do what you guys think is right. Cain, you guys do what you think is right, right. and uh, I'm not going to call any falls, balls or strikes. But what I love about Father Landy calls us to fa- uh, the faithful, that's us, to pray in fear and trembling that Jesus might deliver us from this trial. That's what we do in holy hours, right, for but added that the Lord may want us to endure it. Listen to this meditation, man. It's powerful. Because only perhaps then may the church be freed from all the sin and corruption that lies within her and be made holy and pure. Jesse, just to refresh our memories, we've got the police coming into the Vatican for orgies, to stop those things. We've got so much corruption, financial corruption in the church. Let's it's face Pope it. Paul VI. Yes. The, the so it needs bank, yeah. to be the cancer, as I said yesterday, needs to be purged. And he ended on a hopeful note saying that it will be up to you, Jesse, and myself, the laity, to bring about the needed purification, and in particular, the faithful of courageous Catholic women who he called the living icons of the church. You know what, Jess? I couldn't agree more. And he is agreeing with what Bishop Sheen said that we as laity need to save the church. And ask our bishops and priests to be good bishops and to be good priests and not act like world leaders. No, we don't need politicians. No. We, need, we need successors of the apostles got it. to call balls and strikes, yep. or as, or as uh, the Vatican II says, yep. to teach, govern, and sanctify. Yep, yep. yep. Father Wynandi, he ended up on a hopeful note. He's saying again that yes. it's, it's going to be the lay people That's that right. need to. We need to to bring our A game. That's what he's saying. He says, <laughs> I "Love it." Yeah, yeah. We need to bring. Our, he's my he's, kind of guy, Jess. Yeah, we need to bring up uh, about the needed purification. Yeah, he says in particular, faithful and courageous Catholic women, whom he has called the living icons of the church. And Terry, I'm going to be honest with you. There's a lot of good Catholics. They're friends of mine, friends of yours. Sure. They, they defend what's happening in the Vatican and the these synods and the Morris Laetitia. Oh, yeah. They defend it, Terry. To the hill. Till, I mean, the, uh, the, they're, they're apologists yeah. to defend modernism, and they'll use all their intellectual firepower, their biblical knowledge, their knowledge of church history to say, no, 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 you, you're, you're missing the point, Terry and Jesse. Explain it all you're, the you're, way. You're looking at the, you're seeing, you're, you're missing the forest for the trees. Yeah. Where there's a lot of us, Terry, for many years, we've said, I have. I'll be. I'm guilty. Me too. No, 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 no. no Michael way. Davies. He's 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 crazy. Yeah. No, 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 no. The wanderer. That that's right wing. That's right wing. No, 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 no. Uh, 
yeah, uh, uh, this uh, this prelate and that one over there. No, they're uh, Malachi Martin. He, he's uh, he's a disgruntled Jesuit. Terry, all these things now that they were saying for decades, and I'm not saying they're prophets, yeah. and I'm not saying they're perfect, but I'm just saying, Terry, boy, oh, boy, as I look at their reading, their material that they wrote now, because I have it all on my, my shelves, yeah. I'm saying, these guys were saying this 20, 30 years ago. Well, Jesse, you named Sim. Father Enrique Rueda, who wrote The Homosexual Network in 1982, his life was destroyed because he him. exposed. I knew him. Father John Harden. I'll give you another example. He's a Jesuit. Great Jesuit. His cause is up for canonization. Do you know that when he was teaching at Jesuit universities, they got rid of him because he was too orthodox. And he was persecuted big time for what he said. And you know what he told me, Jesse, back in San Diego, California in 1993. It's in my book, How to Share Your Faith with Anyone. He told me, Terry. He said, it's going to be lay people like you that's going to save the church. He said, the clergy's corrupt right now. We need lay people to straighten us out. And he was just repeating what Fulton Sheen said back in the 70s, Jess. And, I, and I've met all these guys in my 40 years, and I'm, I'm 62 years old, and I'm going, man, I didn't realize all that at the time, but now it's all coming together, and I'm saying, I want to spend the rest of my life, Jess, until I drop dead proclaiming Jesus Christ and no compromise here at Virgin Most Powerful. We're just going to teach what Christ taught for 2,000 years. And if we got to take a hit for that, well, oh, well, Jess. Oh, we have taken hits already, Terry. Well, we're going to with, with the establishment. I've been uh, thrown out of churches for yeah. speaking like this. Same here. I mean, uh, Terry's been to churches. I've been to churches where the modernists have picketed us. Yeah, that's right. They have picketed us, protesting because we're speaking at a church. Yeah. Dice, we've been closed. You know, I've, I've been some dice that says, oh, no, you, you can't come and speak here. You're canceled. <laughs> why? Me, my, why? Uh, we, we don't want to give you a reason. Why? I'm in good standing. I'm a good, I'm in, I'm a Catholic in good standing. I'm not a, a molester. Yeah. Uh, why can't I go? Uh, because, uh. Well, you part your hair, Jess. Yeah, that's exactly. Give me a break. You know what it is, folks? Here at Virgin Most Powerful, charity with clarity. And in certain fo- places in the church, they it's don't want allowed. that. And so I thank you, our listener, to support Virgin Most Powerful, because they're not going to shut our mouths up. You know why? We have our own network now. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And and other stations are picking us up, like Stations of the little Cross. Little by little. Florida. picked up by yep. one station. And I want to ask you, our listener, Jess, I'm going to ask our folks, that if you share us on Facebook or YouTube, that's how you can help promote this show yes. and make it go what they call viral. Because you know what? There aren't that many guys. Here's the difference. We teach the faith, but we also give hope not just pointing out all the problems in right. the church. Amen. And I think that's our charism. And I want to thank you for supporting that charism because we're growing. It's all because of you, our listener. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, this Saturday, I'm going to be at the uh, uh, city of Paula, San Diego <laughs> at the 21st Annual Divine Mercy Conference. That's this Saturday. All you San Diegans, I hope to see you there. And Father Wanandi, he has been one of the, the Pope's frankest critics, oh, but yeah. he does it with a lot of charity. That's right. He does it with love, and he says that there's chronic confusion right now that's happening in the church. We need to pray much. Uh, There's an internal struggle. Cain and Abel, Terry, all over again. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Terry Barber. I want to share with you a wonderful program called The Legacy of Love and Devotion. Well, what is it? Well, it's where you share your life and love of your Catholic faith with your family for the next century and beyond. Let's face it. Our Lord is going to call you home at some time, and how are you going to evangelize your relatives in the future? Well, by coming into my studio by a telephone call and telling your story of how you love Jesus and Mary and the church and giving information to your great-grandchildren and beyond their love for the Catholic faith. How does it work? I'm going to tell you more if you call me on my cell phone, 661-972-7872, and I'll give you all the details of how you can pass on your Catholic faith to the next generation and the following generations. It's a very unique program. I want to tell you more about it. Call me at 661-972-7872. God love you.
buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Reporting for duty, sir. Sure, and Jess, I just got some push-ups in. You know why? I'm fired up because we got a battle on our hands, Jess. And you know what? I'm a happy man. Now, I'm not a masochist, Jess, but I just love to have the solution to what Jesus Christ taught, even in these times, because we know we win. And I want to encourage people. But Jess... Let's go ahead and continue but with show John. Show us about Cardinal Henry Newman, Terry. Okay. That's, uh... Yeah, I want to talk about John Henry Newman. Yesterday I mentioned that Bishop Sheen was in the train with him. But John Henry Newman was an amazing man. So many people converted to the Catholic faith. Now, you know he was born back in 1801, died 1890. He was almost 90 years old. But he wrote all the time. And there's a book uh, that he wrote that a lot of my Protestant theologian friends who say it's a dangerous book because it what brought it's what brought them in to the Catholic Church. It's the uh, how do you pronounce that, Jesse? Apologia uh, uh, pro vita sua. Sua. Okay, yeah. so that's the book that has brought so many people. We call it the Oxford Movement. Why do we call it that? Because Henry Newman brought thousands of vocations of nuns and priests to the church and converts. I think uh, you know Scott Hans kind of like the same thing in the 1980s, late 80s, yeah. when he came into the Catholic Church. So Henry Newman is an amazing man. He was canonized last Sunday. He had many, many gifts. He wrote. He preached. And I think of him today, Jesse, and I go, wow, I know what he would say today. He would say, you guys are a bunch of crazy people. Get back to the fundamentals. And Jesse, I want to just say this. I know on, on certain networks, I heard them say that there's a priest that they wouldn't give his name. I'll give his name. You know why? You need to stay away from him. Father Martin, James Martin, has suggested in a tweet that Henry Newman may have been a homosexual. He doesn't use the word gay. I mean, homosexual. He says gay. gay. Yeah. And here's my point, Jesse. What a statement. It's a tweet I have right here. And this is what he said, too, which I think is decadent. He said, I don't simply imply that the man who will become a saint tomorrow ever broke his promise of celibacy, and we may never know for sure, but his relationship with St. Ambrose, St. John, is worthy of attention. This is a slur suggesting that Newman was a homosexual. Jesse, I think the people in responsible, he's, he's got a superior. You know what? Why doesn't the superior say, Father Martin, you're, you're done. You're silenced. We're not, you're dangerous to the salvation of souls. Because what this man is doing, Jesse, is leading people into sin. Okay, I said it. But Henry is Newman. Is anybody vetting his work, Terry? No. This know, guy's like a runaway train. I'll tell what's you what's he what focusing he on all the time, Jesse. Sex. It's called the sin of calumny. Yep, that's it. And if you do that with full knowledge and deliberate consent, it's a mortal sin. Yep. In other words, calumny, I'll just get, I'll just get, I'm just going to get blue collar on you. It's talking poop about somebody else yep. when you have no evidence. That's right. All you're doing it is for speculation to, to be, I don't know, it's to be curious, you know, speculative. Uh, you want to be edgy, you know, you want to be. Agenda. Yeah. Uh, again, and here's the thing about uh, Father James Martin. This guy, the Jesuits should really think about having him see a, a psychologist, Silence. a psychiatrist, yep. and once they deem that there's nothing wrong with him, he needs to see an exorcist. I I'll tell you why, you. Terry. We love I'll him enough why. to tell us that. Yep. There is there's a, a thing, a, a type of way that demons attack. Well, they attack the mind, and the, the highest form of attack right before possession is called obsession. Yeah. And that's when the demon causes your memory and your imagination to fixate on a certain sin. Terry, and that's all they want to talk about, whether it's marijuana, dope, dope. I want my dope. I want to, I want my heroin. I want, I want my porn, porn, porn. That's all they think about. Tw they, every waking moment, they're thinking about that sin. Well, Terry, this man, Father James Martin, shows of demo uh, signs of demonic obsession. I say that because every article, every tweet I read from him 
every Facebook entry, Terry, all he's talking about is gay, 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 gay. Yep. This man is fixated with this. That's an obsession. And I'm telling you, Terry, this could be diabolical. And Jesse, you just implemented something that Father, that St. John Henry Newman said, because we love Father Martin enough to tell him the truth about Jesus. He said, this is what St. John Henry Newman says. We should ever conduct ourselves towards our enemy as if he were one day to be our friend. You know why Father Martin's my enemy in the sense of enemy of truth? is because he's, pl- he's putting out uh, error. And so I love him enough to tell him, Father Martin, knock it off! We want you to get to heaven. And so if I didn't love him, I wouldn't even say anything about him. I'd say, go ahead. Go ahead. Tell people to have homosexual actions. It's okay. You know, it's not my problem. I don't care about that. We care enough for you and the salvation of all the souls you're touching to corrupt them, to say, knock it off, get some help, and if necessary, go (laughs) see. That's the point that I'm making. I know. And go see a a, a therapist, fine. But if that's not the problem, make sure the Thomas therapist. Exactly. And... (laughs) And also go see an exorcist. I'm serious. Yeah. Because someone that's so fixated on this problem, Jesse, there's something more than, t- than be milk problems. There's something more. It's called, I, I, I'm just Demonic saying, obsession, exactly. Terry. That's what demons cause yep. in a person's mind, in a weak person's mind. And it, Terry, and he's, he's a perfect candidate yep. for, I'll tell you why. So look for at obsession. the influence. I'll tell you why. Okay? Yeah, tell me. Because this is the teaching from exorcists, okay? Yeah, hit me. Demons... They enter a person through sin, unconfessed mortal sin. And demons remain inside the person through embracing heresy. So you'll find a good exorcist, a, a Thomistic exorcist, they know that they have to catechize the, 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 the person who's possessed and they have to properly form his conscience and get rid of all the heretical thoughts that he has in order to drive out the demon. I'm telling you, Terry, this guy here is, this guy here is, is, is a classic case of demonic obsession. And Jesse, one of the comments he makes about the saint, he says, did he ever break his promise of celibacy? You know what, Jesse? That's calumny. Exactly. And you know what? A lot of times people say that it justifies their action because they say, well, nobody can be chased. You know, I've heard that from priests. Come on. You mean to tell me you've been with your wife for 30 years and you haven't been playing around with other women? Yeah, that's right. It's called grace. I've been able to say no to myself. Amen. And right now, Jesse, they, what we're hearing people to say, oh, don't worry about that. that. That's not a serious sin. Everybody fornicates. Everybody commits adultery. Everybody does this. Well, you know what, Father Martin? No. To say that, that this saint, uh, you don't know if he, if he was faithful to his promise of celibacy, that's that's just inappropriate at best. It's sinful in my opinion, but it's inappropriate for saying. It's calumny, it. Terry. I'm going to say it. Oh, you're saying it is. you're saying things that aren't true about a person that you don't know. You that are not facts. Yeah. It's your speculation, yep. and you're smearing somebody that can't defend themselves because they're dead. And you see, that's evil, Terry. Yeah, to do something like it is. that. And you see what we do? We take all of Father Martin's statements that he has on YouTube, his book. And we base it on what he's actually said. You see the difference, Jess? One is the facts, and one is fake news. And, and, and he's a fake theologian. Yeah. Hey, I'll just Jess, say that. Let's what, get yeah, this, what, the, what he's putting out, Terry, yeah. is fake theology. Yeah. And we need, let's pray for him right now, brother. Yeah. I mean it. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Remember, O oh most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To thee do we cry, before we return, before, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petition, but in thy mercy hear and answer us. Amen. Jesse, I would, if I see Father Martin again at the Religious Ed Congress, this time I'm going to come up to him and lovingly shake his hand. I'm trying to, if I have the grace, because last time I couldn't do it, I, my Lord nature was too strong. I'm going to pray for the grace to try and share the truths of the gospel with that man. That's what I'm going to do, Jess. Hey, Jess, what's the solution to all these problems? Hey, Terry, let me just mention one last thing about this great saint, Cardinal Henry Newman. Yeah, hit it. Okay? Uh, the book that he wrote, uh, Apologia Pro Vita yeah. Sua, yeah. he was, a, he was a, a, a very learned Protestant theologian from the Church of England. Right. And he wanted to prove 
to himself and to other theologians that's so important that the church of england was the true church started by jesus christ so many guys have tried and that the catholic church is all (laughs) wet i love it not the church started by christ i've heard that so he went and began reading the fathers of the church and all the early writers and uh and he started writing his book to prove that it was the anglican church that was the successors of the apostles well when he finished his book called apologia pro vita sua he discovered for the first time and it goes to show you you can go to protestant seminary and protestant colleges and still miss the boat as they say okay yeah. he discovered doing his own analysis and and his own looking for the evidence that it was in fact the catholic church that was a church the one true church founded by jesus christ uh and it succeeded the apostles directly and so he could do nothing else but enter the catholic church wrote this book and as a result of this people since he died continue reading this book abandoning right. their uh their fake uh protestant denominations and coming into the one holy catholic and apostolic church and jesse i've known ken hensley steve wood i can name a hundred oh, protestant ministers who have done exactly the same that's why it's so important to read the fathers of the church Jess, what's the solution about our five stone solution that we say every day for those new well we just go back to king david the, yeah. the story david and goliath first samuel i think it's chapter 16 right he had five stones and uh and uh, he used one to take down an undefeated giant. We have a Goliath. It's called the culture of death, yep. culture of lies, culture of propaganda. The five stones are number one, pray the rosary every day and pray from your heart. Number two, go to Mass every Sunday, holy days of obligation, and daily if possible. If you're retired, go to Mass every day. We need your prayer power. Yeah. Number three, read the Holy Bible every day. You say, how? I don't know how. Simple. Read the Mass readings. It takes five to seven minutes. Simple. You'll go through the entire Bible in three years. Every day, start today. Read the daily mass readings. Get that soul food into your heart. Number four, fasting. Let's go back to penance. Fridays, okay? The church says penance on Fridays and say, you know, I'm going to bump it up. I'm going to do penance on Wednesdays. Go old school, Wednesday and Friday. You can do penance also any other day. Uh, Reparation prayers. Number five, fifth stone, monthly confession. Who says we should go to monthly confession? I'll give you three Navy SEAL Catholics. St. <laughs> John Paul II, yep. St. Padre Pio, Venerable Fulton Sheen. Yep. You're going to argue with them? I'm not. Well said. Those are the five stones that we talk about. And for those who are just brand new, we have a show coming up right after this called The Bible with the Barbers with my wife, Mary Danielle. And we talk about the Bible and Scripture and we give you answers to questions regarding Holy Scripture. I want to, again, just take this time to thank our listeners. Man, we can't thank you enough because a year and a half ago, we were on a national radio show and we got taken off. And now we're back on with Virgin Most Powerful and we're getting more and more powerful in regards of reaching more souls. If you want to become a monthly donor, I appreciate it. We got a special thing for you. You can call me at 661-972-7872 or go online to virginmostpowerfulradio.org. Jesse, where are you going to be again this weekend? Hey, San Diego Catholics, we need to get some more listeners from San Diego. I'm going to be in the city of Paula, San Diego, yep. 21st Annual Divine Mercy Conference this Saturday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And uh, going to go be recruiting some more people to be listeners of VMP. Well said. And don't forget to share and like on your YouTube and Facebook. That's how we're getting the word out with these two evangelical Catholics with PhDs in common sense. And let's face it, common sense ain't that common right now. Up next, Bible with the Barbers on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Full scene ahead. St. Faustina's Prayer for Priests O my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole Church, grant it love and the light of thy Spirit, and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to Thee, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. Thou Thyself maintain them in holiness. O divine and great High Priest, may the power of Thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of Thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us.